Welcome to geometry class, continuing our discussion of special parallelograms. And today we're going to talk about rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. First of all, let's talk about rectangles. We need to define them. Uh, rectangles, it's a shape that most of us have recognized since we were very small. And so is the case also with rhombuses and squares. But at this point in geometry, it's important that we define these particularly. Uh, so that we can recognize them and so that we can apply some, some rules that we'll talk about, some theorems. What is a rectangle? A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. If I'm trying to figure out if I'm looking at a rectangle, the only thing I need to concern myself with, first of all, is it a parallelogram? That, that is, are these sides uh, parallel? And then secondly, does it have four right angles? So it's really the angles that are driving the bus, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to figure out if I have a rectangle. All right, let's talk about the diagonals of a rectangle. We have something called the Rectangle Diagonals Theorem. It says the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So if I'm looking at a rectangle, and we'll label this rectangle A, B, C, D, the question, uh, the, the issue here is these diagonals, diagonal D, B, and A, C, and the theorem says that AC equals ED. So anytime I have a rectangle, I can be sure that the diagonals are congruent. Let's take a look at that proof real quick and make sure that that, that holds up. Because we're talking about a rectangle, and we know by definition a rectangle is a parallelogram, that means that these opposite sides are congruent and these opposite sides are congruent. We also know in a rectangle that by definition, the angles are all right angles. So can we prove here that, uh, that segments AC and segment BD are in fact congruent? In order to do that, let's just sort of break the rectangle apart. If we look at this triangle, this is ACD, and then let's look at this triangle, and this triangle is BDC, we have some information here, right angle, right angle, this is congruent to this by the reflexive property. This is congruent to this because it's a parallelogram. You can see these two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. It's side, angle, side. And so by CPCTC, we have this diagonal congruent to this diagonal. In the triangles, of course, these are hypotenuses. But in the rectangle, they're diagonals. So we find the diagonals are, in fact, congruent. Talk about rhombuses. What is a rhombus? That's a question we should probably answer. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So rectangle, four congruent angles. Rhombus, four congruent sides. Here is a diagram of a rhombus. How do I know it's a rhombus? Because it has four congruent sides. Pretty easy. That's the definition. Look at a couple theorems here. The rhombus vertex bisector theorem. By the way, as I've said so many times, I'm just making up these names. Uh, if you want to name it something simpler, something easier, that's perfectly fine. The rhombus vertex bisector theorem says each diagonal of a rhombus bisects two angles of the rhombus. Let's take a look at that. We'll draw a rhombus here. Will meaning me. I'll draw a rhombus here. And we know that it's a parallelogram that has four congruent sides. And we're asking the question, what about if we draw this in here? Can we conclude that this diagonal actually bisects two angles? First of all, it should be obvious that we're talking about this vertex A and this vertex C over here. Those are obviously the angles that are being bisected. Uh, how do we know that? First of all, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC because of side, side, side. We've got two congruent sides here, two congruent sides here, and then, of course, these, are, these sides are congruent to themselves by the reflexive property. So these two triangles are congruent. Uh, that's important. That means that this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle over here is congruent to this angle here. But of course, both of these triangles are isosceles triangles. And if that's the case, we know that the base angles have to be congruent, which means this, this angle over here, BAC, is also congruent to BCA, and so therefore this must also be congruent. So in fact, we see that this vertex A is bisected, vertex C is bisected, and we find that each diagonal of a rhombus bisects two angles. If we drew in the other diagonal, which is BD, we could run the exact same analysis just from a different perspective. 
and we find that uh, BD does in fact bisect vertex B, it bisects vertex D, and so we find that the theorem holds up. The next theorem is called the rhombus diagonals theorem. It says the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So if we have a rhombus, we draw in the diagonals. Of course, we know these are congruent by the definition of a rhombus. The, the theorem says that these two segments are perpendicular. Take a look at that in Geometer's sketch pad real quick so we can see as this thing moves around how the perpendicular aspect of these lines is maintained. You can see here we have a rhombus. I've indicated that by the congruent sides. The diagonals are, are drawn in here by, as dashed lines, and you can see it's a right angle between these. Notice what happens as I move this vertex around. The nature of the rhombus changes, but the fact that the two diagonals are perpendicular to each other, I, I can't seem to change that. In fact, I can't. We'd expect that since the theorem hopefully is true. No matter what I do to the nature of this rhombus, a couple things you'll observe. Uh, number one, the diagonals bisect each other. That's We know that's true because it's a parallelogram. And number two, uh, they are perpendicular to each other. So we see that that holds up. We can prove that real quick. Let's just do that. I'm going to erase this mark out of here since that's what we're trying to prove. How would we go about it? We know it's a parallelogram, which means, among other things, we know that these diagonals bisect each other. So we have this much information is true. And if we sort of look at the top half for a moment, we can see by side, side, side that these two triangles are congruent. This triangle here and this triangle here, the triangle on the left and the triangle on the right. Uh, we can also see that since this is a diagonal, these two angles form a linear pair. And since the triangles are congruent, by CPCTC, that tells us that these angles are congruent as well. Well, if they're congruent and they're a linear pair, we can conclude pretty quickly that they must both be 90 degrees, and therefore the lines are perpendicular. So we prove that true. Sometimes we have a question. We're looking at a shape, and we're trying to figure out, is that particular shape a rhombus? Is it a rectangle? How can we tell? How do we know? It's a couple of theorems we have that will allow us to conclude one way or the other. And uh, let's take a look at those. I, I couldn't come up with a name for these that was, was short and concise. So I just named this one rhombus ID theorem number one. Come up with your own name, that's fine. Uh, but this one says if one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles of the parallelogram, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Let's just take a look at that real quick. So we have a parallelogram. And we have a diagonal that bisects two of the angles. So let's just draw that in. That would look like this. And the question for us is, can we be sure that this is a rhombus? The answer, of course, is yes. This is definitely a rhombus. How do we know that? First of all, you'll notice that the two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. We have angles up here, and we have a side in the middle, which is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So by angle, side, angle, these two triangles are congruent, which means by CPCTC, all of their corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see where else we can take this. Because this is a parallelogram, we know that this side is congruent to the opposite side over here. And we also know that this side here is congruent to the opposite side down here. All right. When we look at the fact that CPCTC tells us corresponding parts are congruent, that here in this triangle, in these two triangles, would, would mean that this vertex here corresponds to this vertex, so since those are congruent. So that means this side corresponds to this side, which means these two sides are actually congruent. Because, again, it's a parallelogram, that means that these two sides are congruent. And so we see already that we have four congruent sides. And, in fact, that is the very definition of a rhombus, a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So we prove that that's true. Anytime I have a parallelogram in which one of the diagonals bisects the two vertices, we can be sure that we're actually looking at rhombus, which by definition means we can be sure that all four sides of the parallelogram are congruent. Look at the next one. Rhombus ID theorem number two. Because if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Let's take a look at that real quick. We have a parallelogram here. And we know that there are diagonals in a parallelogram. Let's go ahead and sort of put all the information in here that we know about parallelograms relative to these segment lengths. We know opposite sides are congruent. 
We also know that the diagonals of a parallelogram bis are bisected by each other. So this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. There we go. So we have quite a bit of information in here. And what, what this theorem number two says is that if we add in the additional fact that, that this is a right angle right here, then we can be absolutely certain that this is a rhombus. How do we get there? Well, we have a linear pair here on the top of this uh, intersection of the two diagonals. And because this one angle is 90, this one obviously is 90. We know that. They're, they're, they're perpendicular lines. But right there, we already have uh, a situation in which this triangle on the right, sort of the top right quadrant here, is congruent to the triangle on the left. And if the question was, well, how do we know that? It's, it's by side, angle, side. By side, angle, side. So CPCTC, it again, tells us that these two sides, this hypotenuse over here and this one over here, must be congruent. And if this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this, then this one must be congruent to that as well. And of course, you can see we've got four congruent sides. So we have uh, rhombus ID theorem number two. Let's look at one last uh, ID theorem. This is rectangle ID theorem number 37 and a half B2. The names are getting a little boring for me, so I decided to spice it up a little bit. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. This rule is actually one of the most frequently used geometry rules in the world. And I'll tell you why after I prove it. So let's take a look at the proof. Suppose we have a parallelogram, and we'll label it A, B, C, D. And then we will go ahead and draw in these diagonals. And we will state that AC equals BD. So that's, that is not a D. There we go. AC equals BD. The question is, uh, is this in fact a rectangle? So we know it's a parallelogram, which means that this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to that side. That was sort of a given. It says if the diagonals of a parallelogram. So we're starting on the foundation of it being a parallelogram. Trying to prove that AC, uh, the fact that AC equals BD means uh, that this is a parallelogram. How do we get there? First of all, let's just redraw these, these triangles we have in here. So this is sort of the left bottom side, ADC. Then, because we're running out of space, I'll draw the other one over here. I hope you don't mind too much. This is BDC, or BCD, perhaps would be the better way to write it. And uh, the question is, our, you know, what do we know about these two? Well, we have we have a, B, a, D, rather, is congruent to BC. That's in this diagram here. And we also have that DC is congruent to itself by the reflexive property down here. And we have a given that AC is congruent to BD. What can we conclude? Well, by side, 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 hopefully you can see that these tri triangles are congruent. CPCTC tells us that corresponding angles are also congruent, which means this angle, which is vertex D, is congruent to this angle over here, which is vertex C. That by itself doesn't necessarily tell us that those are right angles. But if we bring that information back up into the parallelogram, and in order to do that, let, in order to clarify this, let's just get rid of the diagonal over here. We know that these two angles are congruent, and we also know, because this is a parallelogram, that consecutive angles are supplementary. So if two angles are congruent and supplementary, we know that they must actually be 90 degrees. Now, why is this important? I said this is one of the most regularly used uh, geometry theorems in the world, and uh, that's sort of an odd thing to say. It's sort of a bold statement. Here's, how, here's why I say that. Uh, it happens very often that when people are in, involved in construction, it could be construction of things small or big, um, but I'll use the example of a builder building a house. When they build a house, they will, uh, in the side of the house, they will cut a hole, an opening, for a window or for a door. And one of the questions they want to ask themselves and, and be able to answer is, uh, is that hole that we cut a rectangle? Is it a rectangle? Because there's a really good reason for asking that question. And the, the reason for asking that question is that when, when the windows arrive on site to be installed into the building, 
the windows will be in the shape of a rectangle because that's how they're manufactured. Go figure. And um, the problem is, if, if the window opening is merely a parallelogram, and that's easy to measure, right? All they need to do to measure the parallelogram is, is just make sure that these top and bottom cuts or measurements are the same. If the window opening is a parallelogram, but the window itself is a rectangle, then guess what? The window will not go into the opening. There's just no way to get a rectangular uh, window into an opening that is merely a parallelogram. So what the, what the the typical way of just double checking that to make sure that the window will sit into the window opening is just to take a tape measure or a ruler of some sort and measure these diagonals. If the measurements are the same, then it's a rectangle. If the measurements are different, then it's not a rectangle and the window won't go in. So it's a very common thing for builders to do. It's just quick check the diagonals. If they match up, then you know you have a rectangle. Let's move on. One last question we need to answer, and that is what about squares? We've sort of been leaving them in the background. What about squares? We look at squares, and uh, there's something sort of interesting about them. We might ask the question, is a square a rectangle, or is it a rhombus? The answer, of course, is yes. A square is a parallelogram with four congruent angles and four congruent sides. And so, therefore, it's a rectangle that's a rhombus, or if you like to think of it, it's a rhombus that's a rectangle. Either way, the answer is it's both of those things. Okay, it's, so it's more of a, you might call it a special, special parallelogram. Uh, what that means, of course, is that all the rules that apply to rhombuses and all the rules that apply to rectangles apply to squares. So if I'm looking at a square, which we know is both a rectangle and a rhombus, and of course I did that in the opposite order, rhombus and a rectangle, uh, then we know a couple things. We know that if we draw in one of the diagonals, it bisects the vertex. We also know that if we draw in the other diagonal, they must be at right angles. We also know that the two diagonals are congruent, that is, they're of equal length. So all of those rules apply to squares. That's pretty much everything we need to know about these three special parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Make sure you work through a few problems on your own. And as always, if you have questions, send me an email.